So we're going to devalue the currency. Well, of what value, pardon you, mild alliteration here, of what value is devaluing the currency as far as an economy goes? It certainly doesn't help domestic consumption. The only thing it can possibly help is exports. So the initial purpose of the program proposed by Shinzo Abe, my pronunciation has been corrected by my friend um, who has just returned, was to promote the Japanese export economy. Okay, that's something that's understandable. It is the traditional, almost mercantilist role of exports. You export more than your neighbor. He buys more from you than you buy from him. You get wealthier. This is the post-World War II development program of almost every developing nation that I know of. They all try to do this. It's one of the reasons there is a demand, as Mr. Krugman likes to say, a demand gap in the world today. Can everyone still hear me? I just got a shock from this uh, my little device here. That's interesting. Anyway, um, okay, I see a yes, so I guess that's true. Thank you. I thought I had disconnected my uh, my speaking device here, but I guess not. I stepped on the cord. It wasn't actually a shock. Sorry. Sorry about that. Anyway, so the the idea that one can export one's way to success is one of the reasons the world has, as the Keynesians like to say, a demand gap. It's not actually the demand gap. It's that, as I've said before, you can build a factory in two years, but to build a generation of consumers, take to build a class of, to expand your class of uh, consumers appreciably takes a change in attitude. It generally takes a change in generation. And I've mentioned this. My parents, who lived through the Depression, were never consumers in any egregious sense. They never had any debt, on and on and on. They're not the type of consumer that economists want because economists want to keep the money flowing through to buy the things produced by all these newly minted, relatively speaking, exporting nations. China, the greatest example of this that I know. One of the things that has kept the Chinese economy rolling has been spending by the central government. Building factories? Well, actually, the, the factories are often built by loans um, from the semi-private sector, sort of ordained by the central government. But anyway, back to Japan. And that's, that's true of factories as well. So the consumption aspect of the world's economy has been unable to keep up with the supply side. If you're looking at a supply and demand kind of equation, the supply side is far outstripping right now the demand side. So back to Abenomics, the three arrows. I love the, the way that the Japanese and the Chinese do these things because it is – it makes for a much better copy if you're writing about them. You know, the three arrows, the five bigs, all this stuff. Um, so the first thing was successful. The, the, and, you know, there is truth to the idea that the Japanese yuan, yen – was overvalued. The reason for it, I think we all realize, um, is an oddity of the markets. During the uh, during the lead up into the financial crisis, the, one of the favorite currency trades, as everyone remembers, was the carry trade. Well, the carry trade drove the yen. To very high levels, 85 or so, I think. And that did make it difficult for the Japanese exporters to succeed. However, the German, remember, there's another side to this. German exporters, when 
the euro was at one four and at one seven survived. So there is a question here which cannot be addressed by monetary policy. The German export machine still produces products in high demand around the world. Quality, innovation, reliability. When you think of German cars, those are the things that you, that you think of. I'm not saying you don't think of them with Japanese cars as well. That's not my point. But relatively speaking, the Germans have been more successful at maintaining a mix and quality of products that the world demands. Um, I think that's still probably true of Japanese cars in a large part, although they're getting a great deal of competition and successful competition from the Koreans. But some other Japanese products, such as uh, electronics, the Japanese were, a generation ago, the world leaders in electronics. They have largely missed the digital revolution, at least as far as consumer products that make it here in the United States. There are, this is an astonishing fact, I have never seen a Japanese cell phone. 